you take me higher? As far as I know, <laughs> great opening. As far as I know, last Wednesday, our podcast ended around noon for most of us. One of us, <laughs> it continued long into the night after it was posted as he was fighting for his goddamn life after maybe pitching, I guess, as the audience is deemed, the most absurd of the trades that we put in there. That it was, was the definitely title. the one they were absurd. angry about. The most sure. absurd, I suppose. Yeah. Look. Sometimes you have a take, you put it on the internet, people will attack you for 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> it happened with me when I said that I didn't think, you know, like that Mark Shovey didn't try to hurt Jake Evans. We don't even and, have to reopen and, that and, one. And, and <laughs> it's always open. It's Although although this this actually like was not, I don't even not think nearly as bad of a take. <laughs> my t- I, I didn't even think my take was that bad. I actually I actually thought uh, Shifley got suspended too many games. <laughs> okay, okay, but, well, but, but it was well, the- we're on the same page here because yeah. I'm I'm doubling down. I don't think it was that bad. I think uh, what by the way he's talking about is he wanted to trade Matthew Nyes. Yeah, to, Matthew Nyes. First- <laughs> no, 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 Matthew Nyes. John Klingberg, a first and a second for Travis Sanheim, which like there was he a moment there where it. I was like, wow. Like, am I wrong about this? Like, obviously, I'm a I'm a humble, humble guy. So I had to look at myself in the mirror and say, the humblest. Are you off here? And then I did, <laughs> and I did look at myself in the mirror. I did watch the video back, and I said some of the dumbest things, like that. I said Travis Sanheim's contract might be the best in the league. <laughs> then, yeah. with, that's an insane thing to say because they were trying to get rid of it. In oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. Which was he getting scratched last year? Okay. Yeah, like there's a reason. Right, that, no, there no, were because there were Flyers fans going after you too, by the way, who were saying, "Whoa, I don't." Yeah, yeah, even but I don't. I'll take also, that trade. There were also a lot of Flyers fans that were like, "Who's on the best contract in um, the league right now?" That'd be a good podcast video. Well, we could do that at one point, but I, I don't know. I don't yeah, know. I'd have to look at it. I feel like Kyle Connor's seven and a half is looking pretty good right now. Yeah, not bad. that is not bad. I'm sure, but like if you look at like Jack Hughes or Pedersen, yeah, it's true. He, he, yeah, he not maybe one. not including yeah like the younger players. Past certain, there should be like an age cut off because no, but Pet, uh, Hughes is like I think he's locked into like eight, nine, nine, eight, 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 uh, eight for the next like while. Wow. Pedersen's gonna get paid like twelve million dollars I think this summer. Maybe more. Maybe more. Maybe like thirteen. Damn. Yeah. Maybe fourteen. Uh, the caps if cap goes up. Uh, Sixteen. Either. Sixty nine. Yeah, oh. Yeah. oh. Either way, I'm just happy that, you we'll, know. We'll talk more about that. You, I'm we'll just happy more. that, you, you know, people, we get to experience this side of Corwin all the time. And, <laughs> and, and and when I saw him fighting for his damn life on Instagram, I was like, been there with this guy at a few <laughs> debates before. So I just sat back. We like, like the debate. Like one of these. Was like, mm-hmm. We will, in fact, discuss. <laughs> we will discuss. We're was, always looking to discuss. What are we discussing today? Into well, discussing. Very into discussion. Very into discussing. Uh, Need Luke, to discuss. Luke is not here. Uh, we'll get some stats on, on why he's not here. But more importantly right now, the stats that we're talking about today, in our mind at least, have defined the season so far. Each of us has two stats that we think... Again, might just be a, a standard counting stat. Maybe it's something else. Whatever it is, tells a story about how a team is done or even just how an entire division conference has kind of shaped up so far. So who wants to start us off? I can start. I know I would say I, I think I got an, an extra one. So if, if I'm happy to kind of kick it off and then. Traz, yeah, yeah. Travis Sanheim's agent has the floor. He is. Do you want me to start with, yeah. uh, with that or do I yeah. start with someone else? Yes, because you knew it was coming back, as you'd said. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay, well, I can't. Oh, fine, I'll start with that one. So <laughs> I will say He's not letting that my stat away. is that there's only one player in the entire league this season, according to NHL Edge, the new NHL website that refuses to let you look at bad players. <laughs> They like you can't well, see slowest. Yeah, they, they go like bottom fifty percentile. Wow, they don't show you because and they have come out and said it's because they, they don't, don't want people getting made fun of. Would be Re- the slower, the slowest Revo. I feel it would be maybe yeah. the slowest. Re- Weirdly enough, like Romelu Lukaku the- would let those numbers out. By the <laughs> yeah. way, <laughs> yeah, but also I feel like the if you so somebody kind of like looked a bunch of people have looked through and just tried to find some of the slower skaters and one was like Matthew Kachuk. So it's like. Clearly, it's not like you, you can't. You're be, bad. It doesn't mean you're yeah, bad. It doesn't mean yeah, you're bad. No. He's a great player, and yeah. it's still maybe. And and especially because it's also like, this is max speed that they're talking about. Of course, so it's like, yeah. who cares? Anyways, it's very very silly because it's like you know what also can make a player look bad, 
having zero points. Yeah. <laughs> so or like just, just being just a bad being player. Bad is and like that doesn't people are gonna really make fun of him anyways. Like Can, I, that's act. Anyways, it's continue, insane. but that's mind boggling. Oh, we won't put the numbers out, so he might feel bad. Yeah. They, they get paid so <laughs> much money. Like even the guys that are bad. That's weird. Anyways, my stat is that the only single player in the National Hockey League this season to have taken more than one 100-mile-an-hour shot is Travis Sanheim. Oh, man, three firsts. PB1. <laughs> give, PB1. Honestly, give him four firsts. It's all right. And that tells the story of the Flyers' season or no, just no. this trade? Again? No, I'm just, it's honestly just my way to bring up Travis Sanheim. <laughs> okay. All right. I, I wasn't okay. sure you guys were going to bring it so, up. So, so you're right. We'll start with one that was really quick, and then we'll move on because Corwin is still thinking of that trade. Well, that's okay. I'm just, I'll am just i throw out one last statement about that. So one. No, please do. <laughs> the thing the thing that I think people are not recognizing, because like <laughs> one, like as a Leafs fan, yeah, sure. I'd love if we just, people were sending me trades like they should just do like Klingberg Domi in a second. It's like, why the f- would the Flyers take that? What are you talking about? That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. And if you go through some of these things, like people are just clueless about what they would give up. And I understand, like it's a pretty rich price, but you got to pay for a good D. You got to right handed too. I think uh, he plays on the right side. He's left handed, but he plays on the right side. Tough He's like TJ Brody, which yeah. we love TJ Brody, but it'd be a lot better to have Travis Sanheim. Uh, either way, I think a lot of people are underrating Travis Sanheim's game. He had a bad year last year, but overall I think this year is more in line with how he's been over his career. He's never really been given the shot to be like the number one guy, which he has this year. I think that's great, and I think people are probably... I love Matthew Nyes. The Leafs fans think this guy's Gretzky or something. Like, it's, yeah. it's legitimately insane. Like, he was, like, not really producing in the third line at the beginning of the year. Now they put him with Matthew and Marner, and he has looked great, and I loved him on that line, but, like... A lot of people look good on that line, guys. Like, yeah. You're playing with two of the best players in the world. It's uh, it's a little nuts how like people think he's untouchable. I, the one thing I'll say on that, I think I think Nick Robertson's a better player than Matthew Nyes right now. Wow. Well, al- allow me to be the outside voice for this one, if you, if you will. There is a world in which I think you definitely probably gave up a whole lot and too much in your trade suggestion. And also that when, people are overexcited about their own players because that's how everyone discusses those things. But like, yeah, it, looking back on it, it probably was a lot to give. But anyway, it is a lot. But like, like when you think like look back at what the Oilers gave up for Ekholm, like they gave up. I think it was a, a first, a fourth and uh, Reed Schaefer, who was like a first round pick in a recent year. So like that's not shallow, shallow Thunderbird. Yeah, like that's not too dissimilar, especially when you consider like I'm including Klingberg. So they have to dump that salary. So you probably have to give up a little bit to get rid of that. Trades are hard. Agreeing with other people on the internet, harder. Jesse, you're up. <laughs> I'm going to keep it a little more simple. Uh, look, Boston Bruins, once again, top of the league. Just the Bruins. All right? And in part to, I mean, it's it's their goaltending. Their goaltending is the reason why they're getting it done. And the stat that I'm going to say, Omar and Swayman have a combined 1.975 goals against average this year which is absurd to average less than two goals against it's the reason why boston's at the top and it's that's a that's a league defining stat right there it, it, again like i know like it's a topic that's already come up a few times in our podcast but it is even if it is the bruins who are the ones benefiting off of this it's cool to see something new now because you know, always says nhl is like a copycat league and what will kind of work but like they went in, they're like, we have two goalies, we trust both of them, one of them won the Vesna, and has now pretty much, he is the 1B in the 1A, 1B scenario, and they're like, no, nah, we're riding that out, two goalies. Like, it'll be interesting to see, it bucks the trend of just, eh, like, find someone who works. It's like, no, we have two guys, they'll be paid pretty well, and they are in good deals as well. It's not like they're paying two guys, like, yeah, I don't know if money. It, I don't know if it does buck but the trend. I think that's, like, you don't think with so? the trend. You don't think, like, to some degree, I mean, I guess they got lucky, I guess... Because, like, Maybe I think they went a... into it, nobody was thinking, like, no. oh, these guys have a dominant pairing now. They signed those two guys thinking we've got two solid goalies, and it's really worked out for them. And mm. you know what's interesting? I know on the last pod we talked about potential trades that the Oilers could make, like going for a guy like Allmark. Down, they're not giving them But, guys but you know, is Skinner going to start to pick it up? Skinner! Is he going to start to pick it up a little? <laughs> is he going to start to pick it up? I feel like he's kind of been a little, he's on a bit of a heater right now for the Oilers. Yeah. We'll see. Heaters are relative. You know, yeah, heaters are relative. Yeah. Heaters are relative. <laughs> yeah. You got his, you got his for, for that game. team, this is considered yeah, a, this yeah. is a monster heater. Yeah. Um, the, we'll get back to the Oilers, I'm sure, at some point. But uh, Yes, we will. <laughs> my stat, 
Nine, zero, oh, and one. That's what the Rangers are in their last ten games. And this is all without having, again, for parts of it, but they don't have Shesterkin or Adam Fox right now. And they're still playing this well. And it's not like they're like blowing the doors off of people like the game against the Blue Jackets. They had to scrap back. But huge part of that was Laugh, who's now, the, oh, put him with great players and see how he does. Like, I know. Put him in a position to succeed. And obviously, again, I'm sure he, like, he needed to develop. And now he's had time. But he's doing so well. And obviously, Panarin's like the biggest name you'd think of because he's almost leading the league in points. I think he has 24. Yeah. But Laugh. So, like, that's the best story at all that to me so far. Because, again, it's early on in the season. And we'll see what happens with the Rangers. But Seven goals in 14 games, right? I think he, so that's Huge. Day. And the game, I mean, tied the game and then got the shootout winner uh, uh, in their game against the Blue Jackets. But, no, that's cool to see. Because, like, that's the biggest and, critique against them is they didn't get depth out of all of these guys that they've picked. And now the one guy, the number one overall, doing something. So it's cool. Yeah, well, I I think also just like that whole draft class is starting to do a little bit better now. Like because Quentin Byfield's been pretty great for LA, yeah. And like I, it's it's I love to see that. I I I honestly I don't know if there's anything that is more of a bummer to me than a bust. And like and and like I'm not saying he was that. And I, I think it's a good example of like a lot of people are talking trash about Slavkovsky and stuff like that. And for Habsans out there, I think it's great great use of op- like or a great way to be more optimistic about your players and your season and not get on them so hard so early because he's, he's even younger than they were no when they entering the league Pretty, would he not same, have been same age would he? but not by a year anyways not that it's a huge but well i just mean because he like yeah. especially now because yeah. like this is technically his second season second. In, but yeah. the um he yeah i just Good for him, man. The, some of those goals too have been pretty nasty. He's uh, the one thing I'll say about Lafreniere, and I hope he continues to do great. He is shooting like a crazy shooting percentage right now. So it, like he's getting some bounces. He's probably got to start getting some more shots on net and be more consistent with that. But hopefully, he does and just pays off for the Rangers. Because I, I, yeah, I'd love to see him do well. Yeah. And hey, Laviolette has got those fellas buzzing. Yeah. He's got that Stanley Cup pedigree. It, it, it's impressive. It's impressive. Like right away worked for them. So and again, without two of their best players. So who knows? Jonathan I, Quick. Just, <laughs> yeah, seriously. Yeah, he's been amazing. I I'll, I'll, I just love Laviolette. You remember the twenty four seven series? He was coaching the Flyers at the yeah. time. And he'd always call. Yeah, it just kept showing shots of him calling Claude Drew. G. G. <laughs> Wait, is that? Claude Giroux? <laughs> <laughs> Claude Giroux Sam, might. Claude Giroux? Yeah. Is that, that deep in the playoffs? Yeah. Claude Giroux? <laughs> deep in the Sam! G! You can still, you can still say G. G. <gasps> yeah, it's Sam Glisserman. <gasps> G- wow. That's Sam's new name. Wow. G. 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 We're, we're, we're playing hockey now. G. G. <laughs> uh, Corwin, your stat. Uh, I'll go with... Uh, Is this Sandheim based? Yeah, they're all Sandheim based. <laughs> <laughs> He's got some of the best... X no uh, so <laughs> the next one I'm going with is more of a bummer but like could be an interesting storyline is that one a guy that we hyped up I think all of us hyped up quite a bit going into the season uh, Gustafson on the Minnesota Wild the Minnesota Wild as a team have the worst save percentage in the league which I think you is, would not have picked them for that no when you consider and especially now that you consider like how bad the Oilers goalies were to start this year. And like, they've been worse than that. And they have a goalie that we considered like for sure in the top 10, I, I put him in the top like five when we were trying to go against Ottawa. And an experienced backup. Like, yeah. And yeah. Mark under flurry, who again, like he kind of has his ups and downs, sure. but, but still, and, and the, the interesting there, the, the interesting thing there that I really come back to now is like, how soon do you look at Jasper Wallstead and just say like, Bring this Real guy up. They're gonna have to. They're gonna have to. Probably, probably the best goalie in the AHL, and yeah. like it, these guys are just not cutting it currently for that team. I know, like, I think we had some debate of where they belonged. Um, what we had some debate of where they belonged, whether it was like kind of wild card fight or playoffs likely. But like, if they're gonna have goaltending this bad, like I don't, even, they're probably dropping even lower, like because that was supposed to be a strength for them, and they they really need to bounce back there. So. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what, if you guys have any thoughts about what the Minnesota Wild should do, but the the Wallstead thing is for sure the one that I'm kind of like. 
give it a shot. A hundred percent. I don't know. The Wild are this weird team. I feel like the Wild are also a team that they're just kind of like a stuck in the mud team where like they're good, not good enough. They they typically, I feel like they rely on some decent goaltending. Their roster is like a bit above average. They have some younger guys coming up right now, but I think Marco uh, Rossi's actually been solid for been them. Good. He but has the, been good. but I I like from I was like chatting with a Minnesota Wild fan. They, they were saying they're pretty disappointed in Kaprizov this year. Is the one that like like not even just like he has some like his stats are fine, but he's just like given turn the puck over in brutal positions a lot. And so I don't haven't, know. Haven't been hearing a lot about him this year. Nope. You know? I think yeah. the only time we've yeah. talked to him before this was that he was wearing a Bauer forty five hundred. Yeah. So bit of a legend. Yeah. Where is the four? Oh. I don't know. Oh, it's up there. The, the Justin Hall one. I think that's what that one is. Near the Much Music Weapon. There it is. <laughs> He's going to do it. Actually, that's pretty good, man. Oh, I thought you were going to do the thing. You should win. The stare. <laughs> <laughs> you, should rock that during, <laughs> you should rock that during our Bears game. Yeah? Tonight? I think so. I think Here we so. go. I'll fire it up. Yeah, yeah. That, that's... Yeah, that's it doesn't, it doesn't new... go with our bar down jerseys, but uh, Jesse and I play for this other beer league team. The I don't is, do we have a city name? Do we say like Toronto Solar Bears? Yes, the Toronto Solar Bears. In, uh, that's the, that's and that's this deal. generation's like cereal bowl helmet, where you look at it, you're like people wear that, huh? No, I think it. Looks and sick, I though. I like, used to wear that uh, up till like a year ago. I only changed it because the strap broke. So I like I. So... But that's not protecting anything <laughs> I, i'm sure it's a little protective like it's got to pass some like like codes to actually be allowed to play in the league and stuff like that like so. codes 30 years ago <laughs> but, like, well, but, yeah, there might be a reason that they don't really produce it anymore I'm gonna I'm almost, saying. The, the, the helmet doesn't cover enough of the forehead it's smaller but that's why it, it looks like, cool high. like the, your whole segment was like again like you were mentioning who wore what not and i know you, you i were, did a, a whole leafs pregame yeah. segment on like the death of the 4500 it's, it's like so it's there's 40 oh, so weirdly enough i have an update to the stat as well in in the thing at the time i was saying there was 45 players still in the league wearing the 4500 and they uh only three of them were under 30 or yeah. only three of them will be under 30 by the end of the season so the and it was like Travis Konechny, Kaprizov, and Bobby Brink, which is like he's like 22 years Bobby. old. It's like how the hell did you even start wearing this? Yeah. But I saw he like started wearing it in university, and then but uh, I'm totally blanking on his name right now. But there was a guy that just recently debuted for the Senators who's like younger than Bobby Brink. He's 21 years old, and he was just wearing was, it. Yeah, he was wearing it. I was at the game when I was just like, "What the hell's that?" I know you're saying it's like a veteran helmet, but like I still think of it as like the flashy winger helmet. Like to me, like that was like a beret. That was it's a, a Koval chuck. Like, and Naslin wore it. I'm yeah, like, yeah. Well, but like, cause like it is, it has kind of both sides of that where it does. Cause like, and now like guys the like Ryan O'Reilly, said Ryan O'Reilly, and like uh, I always remember like Zach Cassian wearing it. Cause like, yes, I don't know, yeah, it's like looks. <laughs> no, no, yeah, it, he, he, his head fills guy. it. Huh? We might be meeting that guy pretty soon. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe in Windsor. Scary. Remember he commented? Scary. <laughs> he commented on that thumb league. Yeah, we made a thumb league him. where we made fun of him, and he laughed at it all yeah, so credit to him. Too bad he couldn't laugh at that video that he did about yeah, the Flames. What? <laughs> we'll, we'll have a discussion with him about that. For what sure. what we'll is discuss. that? Remember someone, like, paid him to do a cameo, I'm pretty sure, for, like, a charity? Oh, and and whole and thing. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's... It was like taken at not out of context, but technically out of context, and he said something silly about the team. Anyways, that was funny. Um, okay, Jesse, did you give your number or no? Guys, just wanted to say too. I uh, met Mike Medano. Yeah, yesterday. yeah. Wow, oh, you're Minnesota. a farmer. It, it, come back, Minnesota. Wow. Yeah, it was very, very cool. He was a huge beauty. Wow. So basically, what happened was he went on the plane, and I didn't realize Mike Medano was six three. Like he's he's a he's big, big guy. He's a big yeah. guy. I did not realize that. And I'm just like, that's got to be Mike Medano. He looks <laughs> a little different, obviously, than when he was younger. He gets up, goes to the bathroom, and then he comes out after, and he saw that, like, clearly I was looking at him before. This guy's, <laughs> guy's an absolute Guy's an absolute man rocket, by the way. Very handsome. Yep. And, uh, yeah, I just, uh, yeah, I came out, you know, he just, like, had a little pee stain on his jeans, and no, he didn't actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. He actually, no, he just shops yeah. at Calico Cup, man. Yes, yes. <laughs> he, he came over. And, um, and, and, and just like shook my hand. was such a nice guy. And I think I said to him, like, so I guess you're going to Hitch's Hall of Fame, uh, induction tonight. Then he goes, yeah, honestly, if I didn't go, I think I'd be in Hitch's house. So 
He's just like wow, a huge, huge funny. beauty. Even years after. The crazy still. part is though, you said that they they didn't want to let him on the plane because it would have been his fifteen hundredth flight or something. I know, I know. <laughs> like, no, they actually they they actually fought for you it. guys. Like, Blue Babcock, yeah, wow. Under like Babcock. Babcock. <laughs> Mike Babcock, you are a piece of. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Yes. Uh, Sorry, the, like he, the guy's a, an absolute <laughs> bag. I'm not uh, whoa in the, yeah, <laughs> I'm just yeah. saying whoa with the energy. Yeah, like. oh yeah. But anyways, uh, a stat. A stat. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, Mike Babcock is a massive piece of <laughs> uh, a, a bunch of good Babcock stats. <laughs> just working the um, Mike, Mike Babcock. Uh, Hasn't coached a game in the NHL since. <laughs> yeah. 2019? I think so, yeah. Uh, you have to check your phone but, to be able to verify that stat. <laughs> <laughs> on, uh, on, on another note, though, I'll, I will discuss, keeping it simple yeah, again, we'll I'm, I'm looking to discuss the Edmonton Weathers. Yeah, okay. And I think that it's literally, like, the, you know, obviously their goaltending has been really bad, but, like, a, a serious season-defining stat for them is that Carter McDavid only has three goals. And this is a guy who led the league in goals last year. I mean, he led the league in points. He dominated last year, and... You know, clearly he's probably playing a little banged up right now. Something's going wrong. I think he's going to uh, get hot under the new coach. Um, what's his name again? Got uh, got, to, got a good bounce Chris last Knobloch. night. Knobloch, Chris Knobloch, who coached him in Erie. <laughs> and I feel like he's going to start bouncing back, but the Oilers are, I think they're like 4-9-1 and one or something, or something bad. And they need more from McDavid. That's the bottom line. They're, they're a team that's built so focused on McDavid and Dreisaitl. They do have some secondary scoring, obviously, but... The team's humming. The, the team is a, an elite playoff team when McDavid is playing at his best, and he has not been at his best. You're particularly in the goal scoring department. As you said, though, like because again, he went down with that injury before the the outdoor game, and they haven't really, and they won't provide any kind of true update. It's one of those things again. You probably won't find out until the end sucks. of the playoffs. But that highlights just how much that does suck even more. Where like I get it, he's the best player in the league, but. I am so curious. Like, maybe genuinely well, there is something where it's like you got some major injury that he's just playing through and now. And it, it's a weird one because I always, like, like I was so mad last year when we found out that, like, Matthews was playing hurt for, like, a bunch of the season because it's like, why? Like, what? Well, they, they need to, though, because, like, no, no, they might I, not that's what I was going to say. Yeah. This, this is a bit of a different one because, like, they're, they've started so poorly that, like, they need everything they of course. can to, like, even make sure they can squeak in because the, their division is. Like, now that – especially add now that, like, Vancouver's a – Caught like, fire. Yeah. And then yeah. so, like, with Vancouver, the Kings, Vegas, like, even – like, Seattle's off to a tough start, but I still think they're a solid team. Like, that's, that's a – tough division it, to make it's the playoffs, weird man. to say like in mid-november that i wouldn't be surprised at this point that the Oilers didn't make the playoffs i i still i, I still think they will but i i get what you mean by like you wouldn't be surprised because yeah. like i'm not saying that will happen but like to even think that you could say that loud and be like i don't have to think about that with the amount of hype they went into i don't know you're yeah, hearing all, the, you're hearing all these people yeah. stanley cup picks you're hearing all these rumors about like david's pissed done he's pissed off in Edmonton right now. Yeah, it's like, like cool. who, Okay, there was actually a very interesting tweet though going around by Rob Rossi from The Athletic. And he you know, I think we've all discussed this and I don't necessarily disagree, but I'm wondering what your guys thoughts are on this. So basically the tweet says sure McDavid could leave Edmonton, but there's a lot of pressure on him to win there. And he said like Gretzky won in Edmonton. Um Messier won in Edmonton. Um, like Lemieux. Yeah, yeah. Lemieux. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like Lemieux won, won with this. Like the, all these legends that draft. Obi Bob, with Washington. Yeah, Obi with Washington. Bobby Orr. And it's like, how much would that actually affect His McDavid's legacy? legacy? Because for, I, for me, it wouldn't affect him much, I don't think. Me, Just because of like what a dumpster fire their management's yeah. been. That I, I wouldn't really look at it as. And like, like we've talked about a couple times this year that it's like, it's not like. He didn't show up in the playoffs or anything. Nope. Like he's been an absolute horse. So, it's, yeah. I you can't I really argue the asset him. that he's been. Yeah, exactly. It's like LeBron. It's like LeBron. Yeah. Obviously. No, for sure. Where he, at first, everyone obviously like made fun of LeBron when he, he'd left, like ring chasing, whatever. And it's like now. And people still make that joke, but I don't know, he won. And you definitely don't think about that Cavs team. No one's like, he should have stayed with the Cavs throughout. Like, well, and especially that he was, went back to the Cavs yeah, and, and then like had the how he exactly. won is like pretty insane so yeah. you'll give him a bunch of credit there i do wonder like that's never happening with mcdave by the way if he left edmonton <laughs> yeah, i'm gonna go back to edmonton. i'm gonna go back <laughs> that seems more unlikely what what would be the super team that he could join if he did i don't like are we just saying like irrespective of like cap 
issues because no, I, you got to make it work somehow. Okay. All right, fine. Not total fantasy land. No, like no, we're we're living in reality, well, just uh, like the Sandheim trade. We're living. You know what? I think, I think the <laughs> yeah. Leafs. I think the Leafs have a couple guys off the books actually when. McDavid gets off the books. Oh, just re- replace Nylander with McDavid. Yeah, it's an easy play. Uh, hey, there. Marner, Marner, and and uh, the Blackhawks and Tavares, <laughs> and Tavares, they're gonna be freed yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. You know, like you never know. Like in M- McDavid coming home, it's not out of the question. It pissed me off, but come to just come to Winnipeg, Connor. Just like you know, <laughs> you know, what, you know. What, I actually gotta say too, I I should have calculated this stat. I don't know how many teams in the league are actually better than retain at retaining players. Ironically enough, than, than yeah. Winnipeg. Winnipeg has done like in, like they draft these uh, guys and 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 these guys fall in love with the league, and then we just keep resigning these guys, and also to great deals. Like Shifley was on like I think he was on an eight year deal where he was getting paid like six and a hair for for so long. Um, we have we have Nikolai Ehlers making six million. He's pretty effective. Kyle Connor's on an incredible contract right now. Morrissey's only making six and a half. Hellebuck is making uh, well now he's making eight and a half, but he was making like just over six. I'm pretty sure for a while. All these guys, you know what? Like people can sure Winnipeg all they want. All these players want to stay in Winnipeg. I don't know how Chevy does it, but and you, know, you guys are looking pretty good. We are looking good, and you know what? We got Salisbury House. <laughs> that's reason that, enough to stay and Ray that, and Jerry's that I, we know you should have calculated a stat on like just to be like Winnipeg's not that much colder than Edmonton you know so like what's the big deal just Dude, they were here McDavid that's <laughs> actually true they, I should compare Winnipeg's like average forecast in the winter to other days. <laughs> they were ripping Winnipeg because they're coming up on a trip there the Sabres on the Sabres broadcast and I was like I don't know if you're allowed to do that. On a <laughs> yeah, bu- you're in bu- Buffalo. Like, I, and I, I mean, you know me. Like, yeah. I actually genuinely think Buffalo is a cool place. He comes in and place. goes, there's some cool architecture there all the time. Genuinely is. I designed <laughs> Central Park, helped design of massive character. parts of, of Buffalo. Like, they have some great architecture. But not even that. I just mean, come on, man. That's like, <laughs> you're going to make fun of going to Winnipeg because it's cold and there's not a lot to do. And like, and it's like. Come on. Should be a code. Once asked be a code. for a windowless a room in your city. I won't name them because now you've called them that. It is. No, <laughs> no, no, honestly, honestly, it, yeah. it is a code. Like it, a, it should be a small, like a smaller city code. Yeah, like I'm sure people are just begging to go to Buffalo. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just saying, you know, I got to stick up for that. You think Patrick yeah. Kane would have signed there by now? Stick up for each other. Uh, okay, my number, and funny enough, we're getting to the Sabers here. Eleven point one. That is the percentage they have on the power play. The fact that Ugh. their penalty kill has been the improved part of their game this year, probably one of the most notable improvements, maybe one of the only major ones at this point because they're not doing very well. Um, but the fact that the power play, which was such a massive way for them to, to score in games and, and still remain in games, has been that weak, like super concerning. And again, they're missing players and have been missing players throughout, like – Quinn being gone, like, I don't think people had probably really seen that as like, uh oh, like, they might be in some serious trouble not having him. But the amount of line shuffling that has already occurred because they clearly just don't have balance in their lines or, or like nearly lines. I almost said lines, lines. like your shirt. Yeah, great shirt. <laughs> the, the balance that they don't have, it's like, it's concerning. And again, it now people are already starting to question like Don Granado, which. I think it's premature because, like, this is someone who has revitalized uh, a number of your players and actually got them to playing up to a level of potential that they had before he came to town. But, man, it's it's a little dire. Like, watching them on the weekend against the Wild go for four, then against the Penguins where it was just like they, they play in a very particular way where if they don't score on the power play – they don't get like the dirty goals. They don't. They don't get the the goals that keep you in games, and especially during the playoffs, would it would allow you to actually win. And I don't want to freak out and overreact or anything there, but it doesn't look that great. Like I don't think they're trending in a very desirable direction with the play on ice. I'm not saying that they're not going to be in the the hunt all year for a playoff spot, or that they won't improve. And also, they are missing people. And once they come back, we'll see. But. Man, that power play, I think, is indicative of the fact that they are just, like, struggling as a whole to score. I mean, and that's you, a big you, asset. you got to say, as much as uh, I think he is, without a doubt, a flawed player at his current age and uh, and just, like, where he is in his career, but if there was one thing that you could I know. pick yeah. Patrick Kane to improve on your it's, team, it's yeah. going to be the power oh, play. Sure. And, like, imagine him feeding pucks to Tage Thompson. That's- it was scoffed at. I was one of the people who scoffed at it. I'm sure I saw other Sabres fans like scoffing at that 
idea of like, no, no, because they have so much like, there's so many prospects in the pipeline who should be filling that spot instead. But now it's kind of like, no, nah, I like give him a shot. Like if he wants to like show up and yeah. it's not going to cost you that much money. So it was um, honestly, it was more than I thought it was like from what, like I saw there was a couple rumors floating around of people throwing around like 3.5 to 4.5 ish. And I was like, that is for sure more than I thought he was going to go for. The part that would upset me with that, if at all, would just be more like it does block a spot and like yeah. Kulik should be up. Like again, not gonna pretend like we know better than an organization of like when to bring someone up and when to kind of like. But he's performed. Yeah, he's Ron Francis. Might yeah. Go a little better than that guy. yeah. But yeah, like it, it's. Yeah, we're back on that. Now, we're back. Right? On, we're <laughs> back. We are back. Baby. The wolves Give are back the at, at yeah. the Kraken's door. Oh, yeah. But either way, not a great time for the the Sabers. So we'll see what happens. And stop making fun of Winnipeg on your broadcasts. <laughs> yeah, I'm coming for you. <laughs> like you looked at, yeah, like yeah, you look yeah. at the, uh, my camera, yeah, like you, buddy, you. Yeah. Uh, I th- was that all our stats there? Or Corin, do you I got one more. I got one more. Uh, Travis so, Sanheim, basically. Yeah. So <laughs> Travis Sanheim, his course. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I was just gonna go with one that I think he's been buzzing a bit. I think we talked about him a couple pods ago, and uh, the leader in the league in even strength goals. Any guesses? Uh, tell us what conference. Is that is that a dead giveaway? No, just make a guess. And even strength goals. Yeah. I don't know. Who's who's been hot? Uh, Tofoli. <laughs> no. I'll just say. No, 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 <laughs> I no, ruined no, no. your game. Wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> <laughs> That's that hurts more when like your guess is like so bad. Cal- you're like, oh, I'll just give it to you. Is Kyle Connor up there? He's right out there. Yeah, he probably. Well, he's such a big power play guy, though. But I, I, I honestly don't Pastor know. Matthews? Uh, not Matthews. He's a second, I believe. Pasta. I don't think you're. No, nope. no, no, no. Pump the tires, of the Bruins, though. It's a young guy. It's a young guy. Oh, young gun. Oh, young Danton Hyman, young gun. Ah, oh, gritty young gun. Uh, you said we already talked about him. Go on a not on this podcast. Anyway, we just say it. Don't. Wait, wait, wait. It's painful for the audience. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> it's painful. Oh, for the it's audience. in the central. It's in the central. Um, yeah, I mean it's not R- Rantanen then if it's no. a, if it's no. uh, which I think I but I think oh, Bedard? yeah, wow, really, wow. yeah, Connor Bedard leads the league in even strength goals right now with eight. For, so that's for even strength or five on five or five on five. Sorry, okay. so yeah, like yeah. not like four on four and stuff like that, okay. but just genuinely like five on five normal hockey. He leads the league. Just the, normal hockey. Man, but, he has been nasty the past couple games. I know. Oh my and goodness. Like, he's scoring 40. He's so yeah. good. It's yeah. crazy. Like, yeah. I, I can't believe it. I know we, there was, like, after the first week or whatever, we had a podcast where we just, like, just went nuts. I'm like, he's actually so good. But, like, again, he just he is. keeps yeah. going. He took a And, like, it took him just, like, a few games to find his footing in the league. Understandable, obviously. And now he's been on an absolute tear. What does he have? Four goals and two assists in his last two games? Mm-hmm. Something like that, yeah. And, it yeah. Was, and like... I just think this, some of the goals you see him score, too, are just ones that you don't really see happen in the league. There was the whole thing. Uh, everybody was loving it. And, and and I'm probably giving it too much love because, it, whatever, it's one play. But I like the because it happened in the juniors where he does this thing where he flips his stick over and, like, hooks puck yeah, with yeah, it. Yeah. And he did it with against Felina. Uh, yes, yes. Against yes. He, on the pass. He started yes, the play. Exactly. Yeah. He started yeah, yeah. the play. And it's like he's just it's such really a unique cool. player. And I think he thinks the game so differently from everyone yeah. else. And, like, the one of, like, how quick – where he uh, the his most recent game uh, who they were playing the uh, I don't know I'm gonna forget now but he he basically just stole the puck off someone right along the goal line and just immediately roofed it like short it, side yeah it's so short quick nasty. he's like so so good I, I can't believe how impressed I am with him like it, again with a guy that with that much hype coming into the league look at some of these past top picks that again we were just talking about Lafreniere and Slavkovsky and Quentin Byfield and all these guys. That, like, I, it takes there. time. And then there's a guy like this who ruins it for everybody else because, like, no, it takes no time. I'm going to be yeah. nasty immediately. So, what you're saying is in two years, McDavid should join him. 
him and in Nylander Chicago. in and Chicago. Nylander in Chicago. <laughs> they should all be together. Yeah. <laughs> Get Matthews in there too. Yeah. Just trade him. <laughs> just have, yeah, just have no cap room for literally yeah. anyone else. Weirdly enough, someone threw out one that I was like, that does sound like somewhere Nylander was going with San Jose. And I was just like, no. I know because they're going to be bad, but I could totally see it. Like, Ooh, what a lifestyle. Just taking the bag. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but taking yeah. the bag and living in San Jose. What about Chicago though? Like, Chicago is. Oh, we know. We know you want Canada. that, and I, I get you on that. I've actually. No, we did go. Were we in San Jose? Yeah. Yeah, we, we were. were in San Jose. <laughs> yeah, San Jose is We lose like, track sometimes. Yeah. But, but, but Chicago is like. Honestly, that's a freaking wicked sick. Nyland is going to go there. He's going to see those banners in the practice facility. He's going to turn right around. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah absolutely. The weirdest banners I've ever seen. San Jose. Shout out Jerry Sue. Did we, did we tell anyway. you about the banner? Huh? They have banners in their practice facility that are just. They have two separate ones that are just playoff appearances no they don't swear to god it's just it, and it's so they, they, they don't just have keep that. yeah they keep them up and it's not no. one specific no. playoff appearance they just add a year to it every time they make it's like, like a, it's like a big banner no. and then so because they've that's done not, it so many times not, they added a second banner yeah. that, like okay we gotta fit, put, put more years yeah because there. they had some good years <laughs> yeah <laughs> well they were such a power and like their their thing pretty much was yeah. though yeah we make the playoffs every year yeah we're gonna blow it for sure but that's what I'm, we do. I'm, They're so far away from I, being good again. No, I, this, this is I'm upset Z. I'm actually mad. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually upset. That's Check it out, man. so crazy. stupid if that's real, just because it's like half the league. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. Yes. Yeah, 16 teams. And for most of it was less than that. Here, here like, are I mean, our like years where half. we are in the upper half, More than half of the league anyways. Yeah. Let's go on to Don't Think, Just Tweet. Corwin did that last week. <laughs> All right. Been Cor- there, man. <laughs> Corwin, your question. The NHL Global Series returns to Sweden this week. What's one country you'd like to see them play in in a future year? Sam's very excited behind the camera about this, and I don't know why. I'm going to go Nigeria because uh, Z and I looked at population recently. Quarter of a billy. Crazy. Did what do you not realize? About? It's like, what, what was it, top five in the world? Yeah. I, that really blew me away. I Quarter did not of a billion realize, people live yeah, there. It goes like India, China, USA, Canada. No, <laughs> Canada has almost no people. Yeah, uh, <laughs> well, this is half of the people in the country. Yeah, in exactly. <sighs> like uh, I always, the stat I always throw out is that did you know that they're in like the greater Pope? Or, I'm just mixing my words today. In the greater Tokyo area, yeah. has the same population as Canada. And how about the Pope? And the Pope. And the Pope. And the Pope. Like How about he's, that? He's one. He's one plus <laughs> yeah. the rest of them. Yeah. Uh, you didn't say it. Play. Is that serious? You're being serious? Nigeria is... Yeah, it'd be cool. I don't know. I don't know. Just grow the game. It'd be cool. And and I, I don't know. If you want me really to throw random. Out, yeah, they're probably not going to go. Oh, to I saw this country had a lot of people. <laughs> hey, you're going to grow, grow the, the game. game. Grow, grow the game. It's a lot of people that grow the game. Yeah. And but, I, I don't know. If, if you want me to go for like a more of like a visual thing, or just like a thought out. Yeah, what, about like, <laughs> what about Kenya? The Kenya Lions. Yeah, oh, cool that would too. be cool. Yeah, like they've definitely yeah. show, shown more of an appreciation for hockey yeah. than, than that I've seen. So I don't know what their population is. Though, so yeah, yeah I can't that's tough. It. That's tough. But I, I was going to say something where like, and again, because they love the NFL so much and it's not going to be that level, it'd be cool to see something in England yeah. if they played in one of like the famous football stadiums. And I don't think they necessarily have quite the interest to fill a stadium that, would be that way. Insane. But that would be Wembley? pretty cool. Wembley filled to a quarter of it. <laughs> also, I feel like I don't know if it's been there, but maybe it has been. I feel like Finland is just such a great hockey country. Yeah, they are. They yeah, are. So they, I think yeah. they have done the one. Yeah, There's, yeah, yeah. I think they have. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna send through a photo of this, and then maybe there will be like a correction on the photo because I don't remember exactly where it was. I want to say maybe Istanbul or something, where there was like they have this crazy outdoor game that is like in front of a castle, and it, oh, really? it was like really, really cool. What, what the whole Whoa. backdrop to it was. So wherever that was, again, we'll put the photo up here and where it is. Uh, that would also be a sick location because if you went Phoenix. there, did that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that'd be very cool. You could do it at Petra in Jordan, one of the wonders of the world. But I think cool. the, the too num- hot. I think we can all agree the number one one is, is Nigeria. Nigeria based yeah. on population. It is Nigeria. Uh, and, I, and I'd also just like to add in while I'm obsessed with this thing that Finland's greatest export now is Alan Wake too. Anyway, <laughs> oh, <laughs> I also I saw a stand up bit that like uh, uh, there was this woman talking about basically that like. 
she like made fun of men for just like looking up the population to everything. And she was like, women aren't interested in that. Like, they, we, I've never done that in my life. And I was like, I, I'm it, upset. I, I, like, yeah. I, I felt like really seen where I was like, I do that all the time. When it was library, like, when it was library time in like elementary school and you know, you could run to wherever, like, I don't know if you guys had that every now and then you just went to the library with your whole class and you can grab whatever absolutely grabbing anything geography based you're just like oh my god i need these maps and whatever how many people uh, live here big books yeah. like mass yes books. exactly yeah. and you're just like i'm staring at countries and populations for the next 30 minutes <laughs> yeah. for no exactly. reason oh here, yeah here's your tweet prompt jesse uh who do you think yager eventually goes into the hall with and of course this is based on the fact that he still is not in there because he is still technically just keep playing playing right he's still a professional player uh i'm gonna say yager gets in in with betsy uh yeah yeah i, I was gonna say 2046 <laughs> with betsy yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's that's it who's someone betsy? realistic where you're like this guy could hold out long enough that that's possible you think mm. flurry oh yeah mark andre flurry yeah uh, that's like he might just go this year though. So there's got to be a funner one than that. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking like maybe like. So you're thinking already retired then, Crosby, or Ooh. how cool yeah, would that be yeah, for Penguins fans? Imagine him, sick. Malkin, and Crosby all went oh, in the wow. same year. Imagine wow. all of them who've played together Tanger, for 18 years. Yeah, Tanger, Flurry. Yeah, just five of them. They'll have the group shot of the three of them, and then the Yager will just come into the side. Yeah. Like, can't believe we did it, boys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we Never did played it. with you. Yeah. Not once. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, I'll go Betsy 2046. <laughs> yeah. Very, very solid. Uh, Corwin, swing back to you. The Canucks having more points than the Oilers and Flames combined is... None of my business, but it does suck that they have more than the Coyotes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, but I, the Coyotes still humming along, uh, and like, yeah, I, I don't know if if we want to the Canucks, they they just keep going. They they're, they're they've been good. I, I can't hate too much. Obviously, I'm, people are gonna constantly talk about their percentages, but like, it's cool to see a, a team just rip off a heater like this, and everybody just really performed to their potential. So good good for Canucks, good for Canucks fans. Hope it doesn't uh honestly, I, I I hope you guys continue on your heater, but I hope Arizona hits an even crazier heater and uh just finishes like 120 points. And don't worry. <laughs> not not going to happen. Corwin will be punished when inevitably they do well at the end of the season by having to wear an Elias Pettersson jersey with his favorite Canucks skate on it. Yeah. That's, yeah. Ah, no. We'll keep him to it. No, no, we said, I'll, I'll watch the 10-minute highlight packs of every single game. You'll do that? Yeah, yeah you're sure. You're legit doing that. Yeah, I, okay. I thought that was, like, without a doubt, that is the punishment. Plus, yeah, and I'll, and I'll get a... If you guys want it to be, like, a bad Canucks jersey, I'll do that. If you want it to be a good one, I'll get that, too. I'll do whatever you want. S speaking of the Canucks, by the way, just real quick, like, I, I was just randomly at Union Station as the Leafs and Canucks were playing. Got it. Someone tried to scam me in a Kijiji deal. Didn't work. That's cool. <laughs> I kept my shoes. But uh, I was like, oh, cool. It's like middle of the second period. Maybe I'll get like a last second ticket to this game. The, the lowest was still $300. I don't get hockey in Toronto. It's, it's actually crazy. City. It's a tough city. It was and, and I was $300. Said, bucks I said to you, you gotta. the only time it works for the Leafs is if you do it like midweek. Because yeah. the Saturday games are just too popular. No one gives in. All right. Uh, Jesse, our last Twitter prompt here. Do you think the Oilers were right to get rid of Jay Woodcroft? Ooh. It's a big one. It's a big one. Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, let me think of the right tweet here. Um, don't worry, we don't do that part of the graphic anymore. <laughs> yes, and Ken Holland is a coward. Wow. <laughs> Whoa. So good. Whoa. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like Holland's probably a little desperate at this point. Hasn't really constructed the most ideal roster. A domino had to go. He had to try something because he's next on the chopping block. And I think that like when your team is struggling as much as the Oilers were, you have McDavid and Dry Settle only for so many years. You have no time to waste. Get rid of him. Try something new, and then you kind of go. And then if things continue to get worse and you miss the playoffs, then you kind of figure things out in the off season. But do you, I do I do like the move for the Oilers. I do. Popular sentiment was like, oh, it should have been Holland who should have gone whatever. But do you guys think that getting rid of a GM at this point will have that immediate impact, or do you think that doesn't even matter because it's like you know what, as you said, like this journey that they have with with Leon and Connor is not just this season as much as it has to be this season. It is beyond that for at least another season. Like, 
Do you think that actually would have done anything getting rid of a GM now? Do you think I, that would have been the move? One, no, I don't think yeah. it would have. But but I, I do agree. I don't think he's – I don't know. I, I go back and forth because, like, I do think he's done some really dumb stuff. But, like, I, I, I always say for GMs, I'm always, like, when I would try to evaluate them is at the beginning of a season and at the beginning of the playoffs. And then the, – so, like – I know you. I feel like you guys were a little more down on the Oilers than I was, so like that that would make sense. Where, but like I going into the season was like, I think this is a good team, and like a lot of people consider them Stanley Cup favorites. Yeah, I think a lot of the stuff, because I also don't, I don't really agree with. So weirdly enough, I actually like the coach they hired. A lot of people say he's a really good young progressive mind in coaching and Neary honors and Sherry Basson. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I think it's a good hire. So I don't think like there's a massive drop off in coaching or anything like that, but I do think like Woodcroft got kind of a raw deal there where uh, I like, I don't really see a lot of the stuff that happened this season as his fault. Yeah. It's like, well, he's like the most successful coach they'd had during the last like run. So For sure. It's like it's it's definitely pretty harsh, but it's the only thing that makes an immediate impact. Yeah. Where, when you're you get looking why. for a lifesaver of some sort at this. But point. it was it was so weird after a win too, which like, like they they finally actually figured it out. It seemed like, and then they're like, nah, still can them. Uh, I said I would end the show last time with uh, reading a comment, at least. I think we went comments, but we ran out of time a little bit here. I'm just going to go quick and say, I don't know why, but I feel like the podcast could use a better conclusion every week than, that's the podcast this week. <laughs> <laughs> and there's the Fox capacitor right behind you. Something uh, like a little fill in the blank. Now, um, I agree with the, this point. But that's what we're doing this week again, unfortunately. I don't know. Maybe you guys can help me come up with a little bit more of a clever way of ending things that uh, isn't gimmicky at the same time. Because sometimes we just got to get the heck out of here. Because we do have a meeting in one minute. Because <laughs> it's, uh, it's kind of how our days roll, unfortunately, sometimes. Well, to um, the new Edmonton Oilers head coach. Can you take me higher? My sacrifice. To a place I think that's it. I actually don't know the lyrics for sure.